So it's finally time to take a look at the RTX 4080, and today we're going to discuss if this thing is actually worth picking up. And it's a heavy one, yeah, uh, this will actually launch with the 3 slot cooler that you'll also find on the 4090. As far as I can see, it's the exact same design. And this is actually the only 4080 that you need to worry about for now. Uh, you might have seen at launch there was a 12 gig and 16 gig that were announced, but after the insane backlash that Nvidia received regarding the 12 gigabyte model, because turns out when you take a closer look, it's actually a really cut down card. Nvidia decided to, I guess, recall or revise that product and we'll probably see that come out in the future under a different name or, you know, different pricing as well. But for now, we have the 16 gig model and that's all we need to worry about right now. But yeah, I was pretty surprised to see such a beefy cooler design for a 320 watt card. I guess Nvidia this time around don't want to like re-engineer a different cooler design for the lower TDP like they did for the 3090 and the 3080. And it's funny, you put this next to a 3080, it looks like a mammoth of a GPU. Also interesting to note, whereas the 3080 used a dual 8-pin power adapter, the 4080 uses a triple 8-pin power adapter, which is one less 8-pin from the 4090. And then taking a look at the specs, the CUDA cores have been bumped up only slightly compared to previous gen, 9728 in total, although clock speeds have seen a huge boost of around 50%. Then when it comes to the VRAM, it's both better and worse. There's an extra 6 gigabytes of video memory on board, but with a slimmer memory bus width. And all this for an MSRP of 1200 US dollars. That looks pretty alarming next to the $700 price tag of the 3080, but if we're all honest, it was pretty rare to see it around that price. Most of the 3080s that I saw following launch were closer to the $1000 USD mark. What is kind of alarming though, is how much more cut down the 4080 is compared to the 4090. It's definitely not the same story as previous gen, where the 3080 and 3090 were pretty closely matched in terms of CUDA cores and overall silicon, and especially when it came to gaming performance. Here though, there is an enormous difference between the two, which is odd because the pricing is closer than what it was for the 3080 and 3090. And this begins the discussion, because if you're already in the market for a $1,200 GPU, then surely you're also in the market for a $1,500 GPU. You know, it's kind of within the same scope. And if the $1,500 product is a measurably better GPU, then maybe it's actually worth paying extra for. To find the answer to that question, of course, let's take a look at performance. Now, quick note on the test bench here, pretty standard stuff, Ryzen 5800X 3D with 32 gigabytes of 3600 CL16 memory and a beefy 1000 watt power supply. Basically a super stable bench with no CPU bottlenecking inside. So starting off with pure rasterization performance, in other words, gaming without any ray tracing or DLSS in the mix. And yeah, the 4080 is a good chunk faster than the previous gen 3080. The gains here aren't going to be as dramatic as what we saw with the 4090 versus the 3090, but we still see a healthy 60% gain here or so in Forza Horizon 5. Basically, the 4080 can deliver a 4K 120Hz experience without any drop in quality settings pretty comfortably. To be honest, that is a warm-up though for the 4090. The CUDA core difference on paper between these GPUs, yeah, it reflects pretty accurately when we take a look at gaming performance as well. In Forza Horizon, the 4090 was 36% faster than the new 4080, which isn't bad at all for 25% more cash. Similar story in God of War at 4K Ultra settings. The 4080 leads the 3080 by a comfortable 50% plus, and the 4090 can almost show that margin again. Here it's 40% faster than the 4080. So evidently there's a pretty big gap between the 4090 and 4080, more than enough to fit a 4080 Ti and a 4080 Super as well. No doubt the RTX 4080 80 is impressive, but it's also making the 4090 look like kind of a good deal. And then here's a bit of a generational look on things. We've got the 2080 Super versus the 3080 versus the new 4080. Without the 4090 in the picture, the 4080 looks ridiculously quick. If you're coming from a 2080 or 2080 Super, you'd be getting well over double the FPS by upgrading to the new RTX 4080. Granted, you're not CPU bottlenecked or hitting game engine limits. In the end, when we're looking at pure rasterization gaming performance, without any RTX, here's how the 4080 stacks up against the RTX 3090, which is more of an interesting comparison than you might think. You see, when I bought my own 3090 directly after it launched, it was around 2700 AUD, and I expect the new 4080 to also land at a similar price. On average here, we're looking at around a 34% gain for the new 4080 over the previous gen 3090, and realistically, that's pretty respectable. It's only when you also include the 4090 in the picture that we get some additional perspective. 
So green is now 4090 and gray is the 4080. And there's basically no compromising here at 4K for either of them. I think we'd all agree both are brutally fast and can play games completely maxed out here, no problem. These would look even more overkill at 1440p. So just keep that in mind. This is at 4K ultra settings. But let's just say that if you're in the market for a beefy upgrade, both the 4080 and 4090 should be in the picture. While the 4080 is ridiculously quick, paying an extra $300 US or 25% more for a 36% buff in frame rate, that's kind of an unheard of gain when we're looking at enthusiast tier GPUs. What's more typical is paying hundreds of dollars for a measly 10% or so. That's exactly what we've seen on previous generations, but it's not what we see here. Now, if you play a lot of single player games and you're currently on a 20 series or a 10 series GPU, the new 4080 can do ray tracing and AI upscaling extremely confidently, even at 4K. This is really the first generation of GPUs where you don't even have to think twice about enabling these settings. And as far as I've tested and actually played with them, these are actually beneficial settings. That wasn't the story with the 2080 Super, which struggled immensely with first gen RTX. And even with the 3080, you did have to do some tweaking and playing around to play at suitable frame rates. As you can see though, the 4080 has no problems at all. In addition to the faster gaming performance overall and the more capable ray tracing and AI upscaling, it's worth mentioning a few exclusive features on the new 4080 and 4090. The first one is a DLSS setting called frame generation. Basically what this does is inserts fake AI generated frames between the actually rendered ones and the result is a pretty considerable bump to your frame rate. If you're just playing as you would normally and passing through the game world, you actually can't notice these fake AI frames frames, they just blend in super well. The difference in smoothness though is definitely noticeable. 75 FPS here versus 105 FPS, it's a pretty nice bump. There is unfortunately a slight increase in latency though when you enable this setting, which you'll feel with additional input lag. It's not a problem if you're just kicking back and playing on a controller, I'd say in that regard you can't actually feel it, but it is noticeable if you're playing on mouse and keyboard and you're really looking for that input lag difference. In my opinion, after testing it and playing with it, it's actually a pretty Pretty cool setting for these really demanding single player games. I just really wish it was also somehow available for the 30 series and 20 series GPUs. In fact, side by side to the 3080 without frame generation, but with ray tracing and DLSS performance mode on both, the new 4080 can basically run with over double the frame rate, which is a really massive difference. It's also worth noting that frame generation is pretty effective in delivering frame rates beyond CPU bottlenecks. So in games like Cyberpunk or Flight Simulator, where you're typically Typically, CPU bottlenecked pretty early on. This is a pretty cool setting to break past that. Now, another exclusive feature that you'll see on the 40 series GPUs is the dual NVENC encoder setup that can encode in AV1. We looked at this briefly in the 4090 review, but yeah, if you're someone who does game streaming or game recording, this can enable a higher quality result. Compared to NVENC on previous gen, which can sometimes look extremely blocky, especially at lower bit rates, the 4080 can deliver significantly better looking footage. Now, the visual gap to be fair between H.264 and AV1, it does close the higher bitrate that you're using, but in my comparison so far, every setting side by side, AV1 has always looked noticeably better. Now it's important to note that shadow play, which is the kind of background recording for Nvidia's GPUs, that will still record in H.264. So if you want to make use of the magic AV1 at the moment, you'll need to use OBS. So along with DLSS frame generation, this is one of the main exclusive features that you'll see on the new 4080. It'll also enable faster video exports as well. Here in DaVinci Resolve Studio, we save a good chunk of time for a 4K export. Then if you're after faster 3D rendering performance, here in Blender, we get a 44% faster render time compared to the 3080, which to be fair is a rendering beast in its own right. At the kind of blistering speeds that you're seeing here on the 40 series for 3D rendering, you can expect faster viewport performance, faster still renders, and much faster renders if you're doing lengthy stuff like animations. As we mentioned when it came to gaming though, probably also consider that 4090 as an option, especially if you're doing this stuff for work. In V-Ray 5 here, there's actually a pretty big difference between the two. 4090 here is 45% faster when rendering with RTX and 40% faster with CUDA. In terms of power consumption and thermals, the 4080 is surprisingly good. It runs less power in fact than the 3080, which pretty much runs at 320 watts the entire time. Here in Fermark, the 4080 pulled around 300 watts and most of the time in game, it pulls a little bit less than that. And 
thanks to the beefy triple slot cooler, thermals and noise levels are just not a problem. I left the card running for an hour here while I went and grabbed some lunch, and it topped out at just 64 degrees C with a room ambient of 23. Now the first question that I asked myself before making a big tech upgrade or just any purchase in general is, you know, what does this enable me to do that I couldn't do previously? Does it give me a better experience or does it, you know, save me a lot of time or does it make my life easier in any way? Uh, you know, at least in regards to the first two, the 40 series GPUs are definitely raising the bar quite a bit. I mean, you get uncompromising 4K gaming performance and they do have exclusive features, the DLSS frame generation and the dual NVENC encoders. They do enable you to do things that you couldn't do before. Now it goes without saying that if you're already on a 30 series GPU, like a 3070 or a 3080 for example, and especially if you're not interested in those exclusive features, then this is gonna be a waste of money for you. You're just not gonna get that benefit of the additional experience or those exclusive features. And especially if you don't have like a 4K monitor or a high refresh rate 1440p monitor, you're not even gonna be able to see the extra frames that you'd be getting. It is, however, a pretty colossal upgrade if you're coming from a 20 series GPU or earlier, even if you're coming from a 2080 Ti. There's a pretty meaningful upgrade to be had there before you even factor in the heavy stuff like 4K or ray tracing. Again, though, it is kind of within arm's reach of the 4090, which is a more powerful GPU. So definitely take a look at the pricing in your region, consider what monitor and power supply you're going to be pairing with either of them, and then maybe make your decision based off that as well. But yeah, 4080 versus 4090, it is a realistic discussion. And the 4090 is oddly the better pound for pound GPU by the looks of things so far. So it goes on sale tomorrow. Uh, we'll see where the pricing ends up. That's gonna be really interesting versus the 4090. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, hopefully you enjoyed the review. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.